Well, hello. I'm here at school right now, judging a speech meet. I kind of forgot last night I was going to film it, or going to be doing this this morning. So I was going to film pens in use early, but guess not. <laughs> so I had a little bit of a break here, so I thought I would just... You know, instead of doing something productive, I just thought I'd film a video. Of course, at a thing like this, people are wondering what pens did he bring? Brought my Parker 61. So I'm filling out the ballots with that. I did use a different pen to write names and stuff on it, but uh, anyway, that's with me. And then I brought, those are my cards not made with fountain pens for timing, but then I brought one of my new toys, pen case. And I don't really know why I brought it, I just felt like, hey, I bought this thing, let's use it. So, you can tell where the uh, Parker 61 was sitting. My Conklin word gauge. The mystery pen that, you know, when I bought that Parker dual fold, I said there was another expensive pen. Here it is. So now you know the brand, you just don't know what model. And here is my Pilot um, E95, which probably should just sit in my pocket, but there it is. And I think somebody's gonna ask the brand of this, but I don't know. I bought it at Anderson Pens, but yeah, don't know the brand. I am drinking from a Yeti cup, if that helps. And I have Elmer's brand wood glue on my desk. For, for a channel that's very consumerist oriented because you know, you have to buy the pens to, even if you're restoring them. Um, I kind of don't care too much about brand names of other stuff. So I did bring along reading material in case I have a time like this and want to use it more productively than filming a video. Um, not a Kindle, this is a Books Nova 3. The reason I like it, oh, and it makes noise. This is a Nook book. Um, I'm trying to remember what the title is. Okay, it's, uh, that's the title, it's by Dan Barker. So, kind of an interesting read. I'm almost at the end of it. Uh, but I liked about this books more on the top because I'm, I want to do some book videos here. Uh, I may have more free time, but uh, one of the things I like about this is I have Kindle on it and I have uh, Nook. So, I can buy both. And actually, I prefer Nook just because Barnes & Noble is where I'd prefer to spend my money instead of Amazon. Even better, of course, is a local bookstore, but... I'm in rural southwest North Dakota, so there's no such thing. Uh, and there's a couple online that I'll use, like, uh, what is it, Biblio? Uh, that, that pulls from a lot of different used bookstores all over, which has been great. Maybe we have that discussion looking at me. <laughs> uh, but Biblio is one I like. Um, I'm trying to think where else I order from. You know, do, do I prefer paper or electronic? The answer is it depends. At home, I prefer paper. Here, you know, traveling in general, I prefer electronic. So, kind of a horse apiece. I am wearing a mask. I just took it off because nobody's here. I have way too many squirrel masks and I'm gonna feel silly once this pandemic's over. On that note, I am getting my first shot on Thursday. So, it's a Moderna because of where we are. I'm looking forward to two weeks or is it three weeks after the second one when I'm a little bit safer than I am now. So, uh, anyway, I guess this is kind of a, what do they call them, vlogs, vlogs, something like that. And one thing I've been doing this year is uh, teaching some Python coding. So there was me trying to help a student out with some Python. So I have a STEM class, we're programming Python in the STEM class. Then I have a junior high <laughs> STEM class where we're using a make, Micro bit make code, that's what it's called. Um, you know, Python doesn't have the nice visual stuff to go with it, but Python's a surprisingly easy language, so I've been enjoying that. And I've actually been thinking, you know, I'd kind of like to work toward a master's degree, and I have been thinking guidance counselor, but uh, another thought that's crossed my mind is maybe it might be fun to get a computer science teaching degree and teach computer science as a change. 
I don't know. We'll see. Uh, when I was younger, I used to think I want to be a computer programmer, but uh, then I realized how much time you just set, spend in front of a computer. I thought, ugh. But teaching it, I get the social interaction, so that might be fun. I know a guy who teaches computer science at one of the larger school districts in the state. He actually rotates among all of their high schools th through the day, so that would be a bit of a drawback. I just judged another two rounds, and uh, I've got another 20 minutes or so till the next round comes in, so I'd show you something. So I'm working on a project with my freshmen. They're going to do a timeline of uh, how atomic theory was developed, and some of them weren't sure exactly what I was looking for, so I made a sample. And my sample, of course, I wasn't going to do a sample atomic theory timeline, so I did a sample space travel timeline. I'm, I'm still working on it, but I, I decided, hey, let's be a little fancier and uh, be a little more creative with it. So I made, uh, you know, a fancier timeline. And apparently mine ends with uh, interstellar war and uh, humans going back to caveman days. I don't know what that says about me. Uh, of course, most of them are just gonna do a really traditional timeline, which is fine. I just, uh, the main idea was, well, I've got Science Olympiad for two days, cause uh, this year that was a little different. Um, yeah, what the heck, let's go into it. Um, so regional Science Olympiad, and normal years we would go up to Dickinson, we would be there all day, uh, building events would be going on, testing events would be going on, students would be running all over campus. And uh, when they're not running around, there's a single room where we're all gathered. And uh, clearly, even with these puppies, that's not ideal. <laughs> so instead, uh, we did the testing events here on campus at, at the high school. So I had to take off a day to proctor that. And then uh, the next day, we went up to Dickinson just for a half hour appointment well our building events competed and then we came home so nobody got to see other schools projects which is always a helpful thing because you don't get any feedback and nothing to compare it to and you just think oh I'm awesome and then you know when it happens and you're like oh I got first or oh I got 13th place why you know if you can see the competition that helps a lot um, Another thing I always find when I do this um, every year, and it's a high schooler thing, they always think it's going to work out, and they wait till the last minute. Then they're frustrated when, it, when they have trouble with it, and they don't understand why. Well, the reason is it's not going to work out. Nothing ever works out perfectly. Um, if you were to see the original footage of this video, or any of my videos, you'd find that I edit stuff out. I... I do retakes, you know, some people have said I'm more natural. Yeah, I leave more in than other people would, so I'm not as polished as uh, some pen reviewers are. But, you know, I do retake things and uh, I definitely edit. And when you build things, it's that on steroids. Uh, you've got this beautiful idea in your head and then you try to execute it and you're like, oh. Back to the drawing board, we'll try something else. And it happens over and over. Or just simple things, things break. Um, I don't want to get it out. There is a uh, gravity vehicle sitting way up on my shelf across the room. <laughs> um, night before competition, they're finally doing their ro road tests with it. And the girl tightens it. And she says, which way do I turn the wrench? And the, the boy who's on the same uh, project with her says, starts to tell her, but she just cranks it the other way, bent one of the washers. I, I don't know how to describe it, but like the whole inside of the washer is pushed in. Uh, I've never seen that happen to a washer before. And of course, bent up their axle. Um, and uh, luckily didn't break the body of the vehicle because that would have been the end. <laughs> and then she's, you know, then they're like, well, what do we do now? And so they're trying to get it all off because now they got to do it over. And suddenly the girl remembers that she has to go to work and leaves the boy here and he's just like, you know what? 
and he had to cut a new axle with quarter inch uh, threaded steel rod and uh, what, what do you have that I can use to cut this? <laughs> I've been meaning to go get more hacksaw blades, I just haven't because uh, I figured we don't need them now because we're at that point that we don't need one. So uh, I have a very dull blade in it with a lot of the teeth on it chipped off. And I said, here you go, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> so needless to say, he wasn't very happy with me or with her. But uh, we got through it. it. They had one good run up in Dickinson and the other two were kind of, because the wheels... Some of those things they would have found out if they'd been testing for a few weeks. The wheel, the front wheels started locking up. So, yeah, start earlier. Uh, I'm in my storage room right now. I'm going to be quiet because there's an event going right through the door next to me. But I wanted you to see this. I had another student doing what's called Mission Possible. The goal is to get a golf ball to land here. So he starts it rolling comes down here, drops, hits this string, which pulls a pin out from here. Uh, meanwhile, the golf ball, they had to, he had to slow it down so it lands here <laughs> and then rolls down to sit in this cup, which is supposed to tip it and then tip back. Um, but, you know, he's got to have other events to make it going on. So then he pulls out a pin here by that string I showed you rolls down this inclined plane, which is a scorable thing, lands in this cup here, and then the cup falls, which, oh, it fell off the pulley, doesn't matter, which raises up this uh, third class lever, five centimeters, which causes another ball to roll down, and then the ball rolls down here, it's supposed to hit this peg, and knock a piece of balsa wood that's sitting on it loose, which allows this with the golf ball to tip off onto the tee. So it's kind of a Rube Goldberg machine, you know, a really complicated device to do one single task. And uh, they limit which actions you can actually do in the Rube Goldberg machine, which I'm not sure why, because I remember at other times they had a lot more options or just freedom, you know, here's the task you have to do and here's roughly what we're looking for. But anyway, again, starts it at the last minute. Uh, so it could have been so much more. And so I don't know how we placed, because again, I didn't see the competition. I know that the school that was there before us had something in their device that was inflated using an air pump because I could hear it running. But never got to see it. And so we've got kids that have no idea. Um, we're also finding here, and I've talked to a few coaches, not in person except for one, but talked to a few. It sounds like getting people in Science Olympiad this year has been hard, but we're finding that that's true of all the extracurricular sports included. It's just not a year when kids want to be in stuff, and... Uh, I think the pandemic is a big part of it. I know the way they're running the speech me is awful. Uh, and I don't fault the people running the speech me because they're all being run this way. But uh, I've got kids coming in. Uh, I can't show you that because that has their names on it. Um, but I've got kids coming in all day. I'm basically judging four different events. Um, so, you know, I judged my first, uh, what was it? serious pros event at nine o'clock. I'll judge my last one at 12.40. And I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I gotta remember them. So after the, all of this, so about 115, 120, I can then turn around and rank them all. <laughs> Uh, usually I'll, I would have maybe eight in an hour at the most, and I would rank them all at the end of that hour. Well, it's pretty easy because you just put the ballot, just keep reordering the ballots as, oh, that one was pretty good, or, ooh, and then you just kind of place them. But when it's all day, and they take the ballots away from you every hour because the school is only here for an hour, then the next school comes in, well, it's not the same. So, yeah, I... Uh, 
And, and the kids don't get to see, again, they don't get to see kids from other schools competing, so they don't have any idea what they're competing against. So I just be glad when the damn thing's over. Uh, the whole pandemic, I mean. Uh, this is my last time judging speech for the year, so that's good. I uh, just, it's been one of my worst years teaching. I, I'd say it ranks up there with my first one. Uh, it, it's been years since I've had this many thoughts of, maybe it's time to just find a new job. But it's the pandemic talking, so I, my personal opinion is you don't make those kind of choices in a year like this. I'm tired, whoops, almost knocked the stool over. <laughs> I'm tired of sitting on a stool, so I'm gonna stand for a while, but uh, I, do, I have a few topics. I don't think I've hit any of them for my uh, pens in use tonight, but uh, I'm just, it's a frustrating year, I think, for all of us. And you know, I'm lucky in a lot of ways because I have a job. There are those, including parents of my students, who do not. Thank you, pandemic. And uh, so people have it a lot worse. You know, you always think of things yourself. And it's only natural you compare your life to how your life was or how you think it should be. And it, it isn't always helpful to think, well, somebody's always got it worse than me because... And you don't really try to improve things for yourself. Being consumerist again, I've got all my uh, speech stuff in a pile behind it. So that pile will disappear through the day, but this really does not film well. Let me try something, because I think, yeah, my next round's at 10.30. This is what's called a Gixie clock. It's so, supposed to be a modern Nixie clock. It uh, has glass plates in there instead of, you know, the, the glowing filament, but uh, I love that I can do this rainbow effect because I just think it's super cool. But let's see here. If I can do this with one hand, I can change it. Or I can turn it off, I guess. Oh, actually, I should show it to you off. See? That's what the numbers are. Just a whole bunch of glass plates inside these tubes. But anyway, when it's on... You can change the color if you just want to do a single color. That's what I did for the first few years I had it because I just didn't know that it did the rainbow thing. So that's fun. But then you can change modes. It's got timers. Different kinds of timers that I haven't quite figured out what they are. And then it, whoops, turned it off again. And it automatically does certain colors. And then there's a full clock rainbow mode, which is really fun. Uh, I, I kind of like the rainbow going across it, but every so often just to change things up, I put it in this mode. But my favorite is this one. And uh, maybe it's a subtle sign of support for some of my students. So I just got done filming that. Turn off the camera, look up, and there's some kids, not from this school, from a different school now, standing in the door looking at me with the classroom dark, kneeling on the floor in front of my clock. So who knows what kind of stories will be spread now. So it's just about lunchtime. I just went through a whole nother set of rounds, and uh, they're bringing us pizza. So that seems like a good time to close this off. So I want to thank you for watching this random vlog, and I promise later today there will be a pens in use. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.